Okay guys, this is GoMath116, and today we're talking about mean, median, and mode. So let's take a look and let's write those. Mean, median, and mode. The way that I remember these is the mean is your average. The median is the middle number. And the mode occurs most often. You'll also see me sometimes write them like this. So if it's uh, not my shirt touching the board here, but I might say the mean is the average. The mode occurs most. And the median has a D in the middle. Okay? So if I were looking at these, and I'm going to leave this mess up here so that you can follow along with me. Let's take a look at, say, 2, 3, 5, 7, uh, and 10. So I have here five different numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, and 10. So I'm going to add them all up, and let's make sure that 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 5 is 10, plus 7 is 17, plus 10, so I have 27. When I add them all up, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 data points. And we know from our last lesson, what are we solving for? The mean, the average. 5 goes into 27 5 times. That's 25, and I'm left with 2. That's 2 fifths, 5 and 2 fifths, which would be right around here somewhere in the middle. Now, 10 puts us up a little higher, so it's just off of that centerpiece. So in this case, my mean would be 5 and 2 fifths. My median, the first thing I need to do with the median always is organize my data from smallest to largest. So what I like to do is just go ahead and do that anyway. This is not going to hurt anything, anything else that you do. So every time you get a set of data, just organize it from smallest to largest. So in this case, smallest to largest, I already did that in my head accidentally. So I take the smallest, the largest, the smallest, the largest, and I cross them off going up and down until I get the middle. My median, or my middle number, is 5. You can see that that shows up. Ah, well, OK, everything is right on that same measure of center, and that's what we want. Now, ultimately, I don't have a mode, because no number occurs more often than any other number. So for my mode, there is none. And you're going to see that a couple times. Now, if I had two fives, my mode, the number that occurs most often, would be 5. And it would be perfect but I don't have a mode. Or what happens if I had two twos and two fives? Well, then my mode is actually two and five. It would be both numbers. So let's take a second and let's look in your book. So the first thing you're going to see is to find the mean, the median, and the mode. Mean, median, and mode. All right, so that's what I need to find. Well, first, they have me finding the mean. So I'm going to organize all my data. But just like I told you, first thing I want to do is put it in order. 1.6, uh, 2.9, 2.9, and 6.7. Now that makes it real easy because if I look at my mode, the number that occurs most often, only one occurs more than any other, and that's 2.9. So what's the number that occurs most often? That's a good measure for center or an average or anything like that that you might see. When we talk about actual average, we saw how an outlier, like Mr. W's age, versus everybody else in our classroom, would throw the average age so that it doesn't represent anybody. That doesn't make sense. So in that case, I want to look for something, either the mode or the median. Both of those would probably be a good case. The median, my middle number, take my lowest, my highest, my lowest, my highest, my lowest and my highest. Now we have a situation where my middle number is right here. I have an even number. So what I need to do for an even number is find what number is in the middle of those two. So I add them together. I find the mean of those two numbers. 16, 7.6, and 7.6 divided by 2. 
3.8. So my median is 3.8. If I have an even number, I look at what's in between those two middle numbers. Okay, so if, for example, I have uh, 1, 2, 2, and 4, my middle number is between 2 and 2. So obviously my median would be 2. That's not going to change anything, right? Look for that middle number. Now I need my mean. So I have to add all these together. And I'm going to make uh, a bit of a, a chart here. And I send with 5.8, 2.9, 6.7, and 1.6, 2.9, and 4.7. I want to add them all together to see what I get. And I'm going to divide by how many data points I have, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's what I'm going to divide by. So when I add these together, I get 14, 20, 38, 46, and 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, that's a 6. Sorry, my marker's a little sloppy here. That's 13, 14, 15, 24. 24.6. So I take my 24.6 and I divide it by how many data points I have. 24.6. Divided by six data points. Six goes into 24 four times. And that gives me 24. I'm going to bring down the six. 4.1. So my mean is 4.1. So the average then is 4.1. You can see my mean, my median, and my mode are all pretty well together. I don't have anything too far out of the ordinary here. So they're all a good measure of center. So I want to really look at all of my different pieces and see what I can work with here. Um, Let's do one more, and we're going to do Keith. This is example two in your book. Keith surveys his classmates about how many brothers and sisters they have. Six of the responses were one, three, one, two, two, and zero. Now, I want to organize them smallest to greatest. Zero, one, one, two, two, three. This is going to be a good one for analyzing all those little nuances and mistakes that we could have. So now there's all my data from least to greatest. So easily enough, I can find my median, the middle number. Smallest, greatest, smallest, greatest. Oh, it's right in between 1 and 2. What number is halfway between 1 and 2? 1.5. All right, so now I know my median. And I'd ask myself, well, Mr. W, which number could be my mode? Which one occurs more often than the others? And I have two of them that occur twice. So my mode is actually 1 and 2. So it occurs. I have two modes. And that's fine. I can really have as many modes as I want. I just I need a number that occurs more than any other number. So the last part I need, obviously, is my mean. And this is the part that takes the longest. 0, I want to add them all up. 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, that's 9. So I get 9. And I divided it by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers. And I get 1 and 3 6, which we know translates to 1 and a half, or one, let's do 1 1.5. And you can see that my mean and my median are almost, they are identical, which means I don't really have any outliers. Everything's pretty well evenly distributed here. Okay? So we're finding the mean, the median, and the mode. You really need to focus. If you have an outlier, and an outlier is a number that doesn't belong. All of your data is over here, and this one out here, lying out here, is your outlier, right? That will throw off all your data, especially your mean. So if you have an outlier, focus on your median or your mode. They will represent very well. In this case, you can see that they all work very well together. My mode is 1 or 2. My median is 1 and a half, and my mean is 1 and a half. They're all right there, OK? So the median. The middle number, take your lowest to highest. The mean, that's the average. Add all your numbers up and divide by the number of data points you have. In this case, six data points. And your mode is the number that occurs most often. Okay, So if you use a data piece, don't forget to mark it somehow. I put little dots on top of mine. But take your time. Write it out. Do not try to do this in your head. But you can feel free to check it with a calculator.